coolest African projects. Um, be inspired. After this, you'll have the coolest uh, chapters project and be inspired more. Um, the reason why we decided to have both tracks running is because um, there's a lot of things happening around the world and usually not enough time to shine the spotlight on what's happening in a specific continent. So seeing that you're in Africa, it makes sense to see what really is happening in this continent, uh, in this continent uh, which faces unfortunately a triple threat uh, which is uh, poverty, inequality, and unemployment, uh, which makes it very difficult for editors to do any sort of volunteer work. But you'll be amazed at the amount of volunteer work that happens in this continent, and we look forward to sharing what some of those um, work uh, is. So I'll, I'm Dumisan in Dubani. I work for the Wikimedia Foundation. Um, I started last year. Before that, I have been a volunteer and celebrated 10 years last Tuesday, and it has not been easy to volunteer, um, even in South Africa. Um, I also work closely with affiliates, uh, supporting affiliations committee. So this is the map I would like to draw for you in terms of the affiliates that we have in South Africa, in, uh, in Africa. But before we go there, while you're looking at the numbers, I want to introduce Emna, uh, who is from Tunisia, who is doing amazing work as well as a, as a volunteer in the Affiliations Committee amongst many things that Emna does in the continent. And also Felix, uh, who is doing amazing work in Ghana and who is still currently the Wikipedian of the year until, it is not, uh, until we announce the next Wikipedian of the year. So those are my um, co-presenters, cool co-presenters. Okay, so what we have as affiliates in, uh, the, uh, in Africa, we have a total of 15 affiliates uh, in Africa. Uh, we have one chapter, we have um, 14 user groups, and you will see in areas where the green is uh, deeper, that is more than one uh, affiliate in that country. So in Nigeria, we have more than one affiliate. We have two user groups. Uh, in Ghana, we have two user groups, and the newest uh, affiliates we have in the continent comes from Tanzania, which also has a greener um, shading because we have two user groups from Tanzania. And the coolest thing about the two user groups about Tanzania is one of the things you'll see in this slide. Um, so we looked at what's happened on the African continent since 2014. In 2014, we only had seven uh, affiliates from the African continent. Fast forward to today, we have 15. So that's a 50% increase in the number of affiliates uh, that we've had in the, uh, in the continent. For this presentation, okay. So for this presentation, uh, we received 39 submissions across the continent. Um, and that represented about 82% of the affiliates that we have in the continent. So this is quite um, representative of what we have. Um, so I'll start with the first one that we have as a coolest project from the continent. We've got a wiki fan club from Nigeria. Now the coolest thing about this uh, project is the whole idea of having a fan club is not usual for uh, Wikipedia or the Wikimedia movement. Um, so what they do is to have fan clubs in universities register as a student body, uh, recognized by that, that university and then get students to subscribe to that fan club. Uh, the effect of that is that you get students being uh, engaged on Wikipedia, on Wikimedia movement and solving some of the things that they wanted to change there, which is the narrative about Wikipedia being a search engine which is unfortunately still true in most cases. And uh, also trying to convince Nigerian students that they can edit Wikipedia. So up to so far, they have established four wiki clubs across four different universities in Nigeria. And they're working on two more wiki clubs from two more different universities in Nigeria. The total pool of students that they currently have of the existing four wiki clubs is 300 members. 300 membership of uh, students 
who are potential editors to Wikipedia. So that's really, really awesome. Well, I'm here to present um, the Africa Wikimedia Developers Project. Funny enough, I happen to be part of this project, and I don't know why Dumi gave me this project. But <laughs> So the African Wikimedia Developers Project um, was started in 2017, mostly to um, support technical issues on the continent. So before 2016, there was no developer from the African continent. The only person that existed was in 2017, and by name Derek Alangi. And so 2017 at Wiki Ndaba, which is the African Wikimedian Conference, we met with um, Derek and explained to him what we wanted to do. Um, since then, we've been training um, Africans ar around the continent. We've been to three different countries, um, Ghana, Nigeria, and Cote d'Ivoire. However, we have participation spanning six countries on the continent. And we just wanted five active developers, but now we have 20 active developers who have solved um, or submitted over 94 patches to the Wikimedia core. And two of them have been recruited by the foundation as contractors. And so this is a cool project and we're excited about it. Hello again, it's Emna. Uh, I'm from Tunisia, but I'm Algerian by blood. So I think that's why I'm presenting the Wiki Maser, the Wiki MOOC. Uh, so for the 17th uh, anniversary of Wikipedia, um, the Arabic community gathered, and it was an initiative of the Algerian community actually, to do a Wiki MOOC. Uh, so they started uh, following the steps of the French uh, MOOC and to develop it to, to make like to bridge that gap between the um, like the very well known languages as, and the very used languages like English or French and to do such a tool for the Arabic community. Uh, so most of you they must know uh, the Arabic speakers in the world they are like 300 million or something. However, in terms of editors and contributors in Wikipedia, there are not that many. So having a wiki MOOC uh, running for like almost a year is something very um, beneficial for the um, uh, Wikipedia movement, uh, for Wikimedia movement and for Wikipedia, and also for the Arabic community. So we had like uh, the Algerian user group, we had the Levant user group, both working together on this, and it was a very successful um, project because when you see on social media people, they were interacted um, and they were waiting for every single episode to go online. That was like um, showcasing, that showcased really the thrive of people to learn how to edit Wikipedia. So I really like this project. So I'm here again to present classes Wikipedia from Cote d'Ivoire. So what is unique about this project is, um, as we all know, it's very critical that volunteers um, make our work possible, right? And in Cote d'Ivoire, they realized that they could organize simple classes um, for people who were interested in Wikipedia and people who could contribute to Wikipedia. So what they did was that they partnered with a university and got a free venue, and they advertised classes for Wikipedia, which ordinarily I'm, I, would, I wouldn't have thought about, right? And they were able to organize 18 sessions every, um, for a duration of two hours, and they devoted over 100 hours of volunteer work to this project. And this project actually yielded a lot of results for their community. I think this is one of the reasons why the Wikimedia community in Cote d'Ivoire has a lot of volunteers, and I think it's a cool project that we can learn from. <laughs> okay, so uh, the next one is the neighborhoods of Yaounde in Wikipedia uh, that's being run in Cameroon. Uh, what is cool about this is that this will be the third um, Wikitown project in the continent. Uh, following Jobekpedia and then uh, Medinapedia in Tunisia. And this one is focusing um, on the Wikitown concept, but using uh, the editors in the neighborhood to go and identify interesting places in the neighborhood 
find sources about those areas that makes it makes them notable and then put them onto Wikipedia um, and in doing so this uh, followed up on the very good successes that we saw in Johannesburg on on Jobpedia and then the learnings that are being taken from also a very successful project in Tunisia so in terms of scalable projects this is one of those that's showing that if a project is done very well and people get chance to share ideas, you get projects coming back in different areas. So that's a very cool, pro cool project as well. So by now you all know that I'm Algerian by blood, Tunisian by nationality, and I'll be um, Tanzanian by adoption. So, uh, this project goes along with uh, the, uh, the theme of Wikimania th this year. So the theme is bridging the gap, and we have a gap uh, on women. So this project, Wiki Women 2018 Wiki Gap in Tanzania, is uh, typically responding to uh, the gap, the gender gap on Wikipedia. And the cool thing about it is that 60% of the people who uh, attended the series of editathons and workshops were women and it was like a project dedicated for new participants not only uh, like uh, established editors or people who know wikipedia very well so um, and i think it's like um, it's worth um, to be a successful project um, voted for today and it's worth to be named cool project because it gathered like uh, a vibrant community and created a big community in Tanzania. That's why we see it like thriving more and more. Okay, so those are not the only projects that we have. Um, there were more projects, cool projects that we couldn't fit into this presentation. So this slide is going to be available, is already available on our, on, and linked to our Wikimania page. Uh, you can follow the links to some of those projects, very, very cool projects that are happening. Medinapedia we already talked about or mentioned as one of the only three Wikitown uh, projects in Africa. And Wikigap in Mali followed under the same channel as what's happening in Tanzania. It happened in Mozambique, it happened in Burundi, it happened in Nigeria, it happened in South Africa. So that was a very cool um, project to run in the continent. Um, so yeah, um, look at the links, visit them, see what's happening in other places. So I'm going to ask Emna now a question. What, what, what are the problems that we have uh, in the continent? What are these user groups uh, worried about? So if you ask, I think, most of the user groups, um, one of the issues is gathering volunteers. Or you can have volunteers, like hundreds of volunteers, showing up in one of the fancy events that you would organize. However, how to maintain the relationship with those volunteers. Um, so it would be great if you uh, have the expertise to exchange with those user groups and tell them how to build a relationship and how to maintain the volunteers' uh, spirit within uh, their communities. Also, um, there is a huge issue, although we have a big amount of activities in Africa, but there is a huge issue with resources. It's like we're lacking of, like, um, uh, like struggling to find venues for our activities, struggling to find money uh, to sustain uh, the work that uh, the affiliates are doing. Uh, and usually they are like, there is like, I would say, an organization or a foundation next door that would afford them uh, a venue. However, they do not have the skills to negotiate or to knock on the doors and ask for the venues for free, for example, or ask for partnerships to grow their work. So these are a few of the issues that were mentioned by the affiliates who applied for the coolest project. And again, it's like a matter of um, access to knowledge, access to resources, and access to, um, uh, again, shared knowledge. Uh, between like expertise, exchange of best practices within the continent and the uh, broader movement. Yeah, so Felix, what are the hopes of these groups? What would they like to do? 
So one of the things I like about this particular um, um, infographic is stuff. I think we all agree that equity, we don't have equity in the sharing of resources in our movement. I always ask my question, why can there be hundreds of staff in Europe, or probably, let's say, Germany, but we can't have even just one in Accra or Lagos? This is a problem. Most often, people want to do more, but they need to make a living. And so, they put Wikipedia in the back, and then they focus on other things. If we can get these resources available for these communities, I think they can do even more. Chaptership, this is the cry of most of the Africans who applied for the coolest project. Well, people might say it's not a priority, but we think it is, because in the movement that we are in, roles and responsibilities are really crucial. And if you're a user group, you don't get the same respect like those chapters do. And so we think it's important that we looked at and we are taken care of in this dimension. One other thing that I'd like to mention is meeting. People want to see people physically. We think it's more effective if we meet our colleagues, discuss our problems, and share our needs. And so if we can be, um, 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 the English is gone. <laughs> if we can be supported in this direction, it would, it would mean a lot to us. And then the skill to report, because often we, um, people would send in their reports, they have issues of um, not being able to report well. If we can be trained in this dimension, I think it would be good as well. And volunteers, which are the most critical people in our movement. So thank you very much for paying attention. Um, hope you were inspired, you enjoyed the projects. You'll go to the links, you'll see what else is happening. And uh, to apologize to Diro, we might have taken a few minutes. Uh, but uh, that was Africa. Let's see what's happening around the world. I think you missed us to the point that we're back. Do you have any question for us? Yes. Hi, thank you so much for the um, presentation and learning more about the work that's going on across the African communities. Um, my question was about you know, you all spoke um, pretty often of bringing in new people to the movement and new volunteers. And I'm wondering if there are any common themes or things that you hear from people on their misunderstanding of Wikipedia or just not knowing things about how it works or some things that you go over pretty often with new volunteers um, that seems to come up pretty often. Can, can you say it again, rephrase it, sorry. Yeah, so I was just wondering when you bring new volunteers into the movement from your experience, if there are any common, and maybe they're not, but common misunderstandings of Wikipedia or things that come up often that are not necessarily true about how our movement works and if you might have any insights there. So if I understood like correctly, Usually when people, they show up in our events, um, either in Tunisia or elsewhere, they're always asking, okay, we use Wikipedia, we do not rely on Wikipedia, it's um, a biased source or whatever, and we try to take out these uh, stereotypes from their minds. So they, the first hit would be, or the first click would be through Wikipedia. And then uh, through the onboarding, Sorry. we try to uh, present to them um, the, the other aspects of the Wikimedia movement. So um, usually people, they are like uh, introduced to the movement through Wikipedia or Wikimedia Commons, and then they get uh, the, the spirit of the work and they get interested in other projects. So for example, many people, they started with us in uh, the project Medinapedia Tunis. They started with us uh, writing articles on Wikipedia, then they, um, they became like, um, uh, glam coordinators, 
uh, c uh, users of commons, things like that. They, they change, they go around the movement. It's like, it's the first hit and that's it. Any other question? Just quickly, I um, saw a, a list of what you guys need, but is there something that the average user in this room can do directly to help any of your projects? Exactly. So we started this conversation in Wiki and Daba Tunis. Um, and we had it uh, today in the African meetup, the Indaba meetup. Um, there is a, a, like a big room for exchange and collaboration between uh, the African in the continent and the diaspora. And I do believe that we together can do a lot of work. I think through those projects, like the, um, the Tanzania project for Wikigap, there is a room to talk about like how the diaspora could help in um, getting the word know about the Tanzanian women. Um, if I take the, the example of Côte d'Ivoire, how can we make um, this amazing work uh, showcased in the world? It's through the diaspora that we will be able to do that. So there is a huge um, like way of com like communicating and uh, working together. I also think the common theme that arises from Afro projects is digital rep repatriation, right? So if we could work with those in the diaspora to bring things that are of African descent that have been sent away in the form of maybe digital content would be very useful. So we could explore those areas. Yes, and um, allies, we need a lot of allies. Um, in this room, we've got uh, members who are editing Wikipedia and they might be members of chapters in different areas. Um, we found, especially in South Africa, when we started Geopedia about four or five years ago, that it was difficult to do simple things like QR coding, uh, the technology, the know-how, um, trials, and so on. So we partnered with uh, Wikimedia UK to do that project, and it was very successful. Um, so there is a big opportunity for chapters outside of the continent to uh, partner with uh, organizations, with uh, affiliates in the continent who are doing amazing work, and also to share those, those experiences, uh, how those um, projects, similar projects are done elsewhere, and get that knowledge transfer and sharing happening. Because it's a big movement, and it should be small enough for us to be talking more often, but it doesn't seem like it's happening. So. We'd like to see a lot of that allyship happening. So sorry, but I just want to add one small thing. And that thing is um, just common translations, right? So we experienced this when we worked with the National Archives in Ghana. They had content in Danish, Swedish, and a few other um, colonial language, right? But they didn't know what to do with them. So when you ask them for meta metadata, they don't understand anything, right? A simple partnership could be with, between um, our local countries and those affiliates to just get those contents translated for us by their GLAM institutions, and then we could have them back in our country. So it's, don't always think about something big. It could just be something small as just translating colonial language. Yeah. OK, I see, but, but this will, you want to ask something? Yeah? You want to? Oh, man. Yes, so I actually want to know, like, uh, are those projects mostly focused on big languages, like uh, English Wikipedia, French Wikipedia, or are they also focused on uh, African language Wikipedias? Um, I'll quickly answer, especially on the Tanzanian Wikipedia. Um, we saw, for the first time in a long time, where a project that was directly influenced or intended to be done in a specific language, in this case in English, uh, got a chance to be um, also translated or uh, engaged with in the local language, which was the Swahili. So although that is not very common to see, uh, that was quite refreshing to see that. Um, in South Africa, for example, we've made it a point that 
for all the projects that we do, we include a, an element of a local language in terms of translation there. I know this is also true for um, uh, Medinapedia and for the MOOC. So for the MOOC, it was in standard Arabic. Uh, for Medinapedia, we had, like we were talking about allies, we had different people uh, from all over the world translating into different languages. So there was no specific language for the project. Uh, the whole thing was about translating as much as possible to all the languages uh, that we can translate into. Um, so it's like, it, it's different from a case to another. Um, but other than those projects that we presented today, um, in the African continent, there is a lot of projects, um, like cool projects, but they did not really apply uh, for this. Um, they do a lot of work in small languages, Wikipedias, and I quote, for example, the Shevi Wikipedia or the Kabil Wikipedia uh, from uh, Morocco and Algeria. So they are doing a lot of work. They're getting, um, and uh, even the Algerian uh, Delja, the Algerian dialect uh, or language, they're doing a lot of work with it in universities to make the Algerian um, Wikipedia grow rapidly uh, from like few articles to more than a thousand articles in the dialect. So it's like there is a lot of efforts going on with the, la the small languages or the um, indigenous languages and small Wikipedias that we did not have like the luxury of time or um, conditions to showcase today. But we got the, really the top of the top in terms of engagement, in terms of participants and audiences, and reach out of their own communities. So I, I just want to go back to this slide and um, show you one of the things that we're excited about in terms of the distribution of affiliates. Um, for a long, long time, we really didn't have anyone on the East Africa end section. So that is something that um, we discussed as a group especially in conference and meetings like Wiki and Daba to say um, that situation can't continue. But again, this is a lot, a big chunk of the continent is still gray, as in we don't have um, affiliates, recognized affiliates there. But there is hope. Um, the yellow shows the areas where we are having groups that we know are already planning to affiliate. Uh, we having a group that's really doing some amazing work in Libya in terms of trying to affiliate, and you will know the situation in Libya at the moment. Even having person face-to-face uh, -face meetings is a big challenge for them. And yet, um, they're doing amazing work, uh, and we are assisting them in terms of how to get to the point where they can affiliate uh, uh, with the Wikimedia movement. Uh, in Mali, Mali is also doing some amazing work in terms of um, the projects that they are running there. Uh, Wiki Loves Africa, which um, Ayla and Florence are doing. I don't know if any of them are here. Florence, there, um, has been really um, awesome in terms of organizing across the continent. It hasn't been support, um, um, uh, it hasn't been submitted as a coolest project. It's too big to think of it as one project. Uh, it really is a movement happening across the continent. And in Mali, they did wonderful things with, uh, uh, the, um, with the local um, volunteers there on the schools project uh, that they worked on. And then on the Wiki Loves uh, Women, uh, which, which seemed to really have galvanized a lot of communities. Uh, you're talking of uh, Cote d'Ivoire, Nigeria, really comes from this um, movement. So thanks, Florian, for the wonderful work that you guys have been doing. Um, so we, we still need a lot of, yeah. So we still need a lot of work uh, to happen. I didn't yellow them out because they haven't uh, organized themselves yet, uh, but we know there is work um, to get something happening in Chad, which is one of the poorest countries in the continent. There is a user that came to uh, Wiki Indaba in Tunisia, and we were so excited that there's something happening there. Um, I also didn't uh, uh, yellow it out, but there's also work that's coming through from Benin uh, with uh, 
users starting to organize, doing edits, and talking about how do they get affiliated. I was quite privileged also to go to uh, Mozambique, which is also one of the poorest countries, and we did a Wikigap uh, workshop there with the Swedish embassy, and we really are looking forward to seeing something coming out of those areas. So if we're saying 2014 to 2018 was a 50% increase, what is going to happen in the next five years in terms of the African continent? So that's really one of the areas that proves that what we have been saying as the next million uh, users in the internet will be coming from this continent. And we in this movement have got a chance to shape what they will be seeing, what they will find when they do come online. So the work that you do as a, as a volunteer really is starting to pay up with the uh, projects and activities that we're seeing around the continent. So thank you very much for... So, oh, one more question, okay? So maybe one more question? Just one more. No, I'm just saying that they are quite interesting and inspiring projects, but where do you begin? What is the spark? Uh, for, for more so in areas where you know there could be an area of interest in terms of uh, interfacing, engaging, and learning, but people don't have access to internet. But also just how do I inspire people? May, may I do this thing just on, on, on an informal private, uh, uh, private capacity? It has taken me to come here to realize that there's a whole new world of Wikipedia, Wikimedia, the whole epistemologies that I could learn and engage with. But now, when I go home, how do I inspire people to be involved? Thank you. Thank you very much for asking that question. Thank you for asking that question. And uh, the answer lies in one of the things that we've had during our meeting in Wiki in Daba. Uh, the issue of awareness is still very low around the continent. So in Nigeria, for example, we've had beautiful uh, projects in terms of raising the public awareness uh, about what is Wikipedia, because that's where we have to start. Uh, most people don't know that Wikipedia exists, and if they do, they don't know that they can edit. So we have a lot of work to do in terms of raising that awareness. So we're going again to need your support as allies to say what ideas can we do to increase the level of awareness. We're currently talking about readership. Maybe we should be looking at how do we promote readership in the continent before we even ask editors to edit Wikipedia. Um, those are some of the things that are coming through. Maybe one of the things that you could bring back home to inspire others is that those people who are working on, uh, who we showcase their work um, in the coolest projects, uh, they are people who are dedicating their time. They're not paid for that work. They're given like hundreds of hours. If you go back to Tanzania or uh, to Cote d'Ivoire class, we see how many hours they dedicated for that work without being paid. And sometimes it's like um, they're given from their personal hours, personal space, and personal life to uh, promote Wikipedia and to inspire other people and to recruit other people to the movement. So this is very important. If we see how they are dedicated, how much they love the movement, and how much they are like, contributing and the human knowledge, we must be very inspired by their work and their dedication. And this is something that we all have to be proud of and we all have to bring back home it's like we're not alone you're not alone if you're working to inspire others or to recruit others to become wikipedians and to contribute uh, to the knowledge and to the pr like the promotion of the heritage and culture of your own country so or to bridge the gap whether gender or cultural gap still there is a huge amount of effort that is being done here And yeah, while he's connecting, while he's connecting, I think we have to like to um, to say like congratulations to every single person who spent hours of his own or her own time 
uh, to prepare for editathons and workshops and to move from a city to another. And sometimes I know a lot of people around this continent, they did not even ask for grants or scholarships. They did it themselves. And I think we have one of those cases. Um, somebody attended Wikimania on his own um, capacities and tried to finance his own attendance to get to know what is this movement and how he could contribute more and what kind of experiences he can get back to his home. These are the inspired stories that we have to take back home. Um, so to those who wondered what they can do and they are new in this conference, uh, come talk to us um, after the talk during tea, lunch, break, let's have a conversation. Uh, most of the people that we showcased in this, uh, in this coolest projects are also here in this conference. When you see them, have a chat with them, say thank you, um, and promise you'll help them and do follow up with that promise.